Hey there guys, so I am back and this time I'll be doing something completely different. I'll be reviewing every new episode of The Mandalorian, the new series, because I absolutely adore that show. I'm a big fan of Star Wars. And since there's not really any new films coming out and I haven't really got any big projects working at the moment, I thought it was the perfect opportunity. So the season premiere, The Marshall, I absolutely loved it. I mean, of course, I knew it was going to be great because it's written and directed by the showrunner, John Favreau. I mean, what can you say about him? I mean, even his weak films, I still kind of like, like Iron Man 2 and Cowboys and Aeneas. But he's the guy who started off the Marvel Cinematic Universe with Iron Man, but also he's directed and written The Jungle Book, which I absolutely loved. I thought it was just so revolutionary in terms of CGI. I mean, it's one of my favorite films of 2016 still. But this episode, The Marshal, what I loved about it, it goes back to the core, the essence of being an old time Western. It's a story about the gunslinger on the road. And I'm not saying The Mandalorian tries to avoid it. I'm just saying like sometimes some episode, it does try to go to like do something different. It tries to be more Star Warsy, but this just feels so, it just feels so natural. And I just loved it. What really caught me off guard the first episode, I thought we were going to have a nice random filler episode, but we're actually going into the Boba Fett territory. And for a first episode of the series, it kind of caught me off guard. I mean, I knew we were going to get Boba Fett in this series, but it, in the first episode, I just feel like, at first I was like, are we actually going to deal with that in the first episode? But I'm guessing because there's only eight episodes and we also get a big arc to deal with, I just feel like, let's do the Boba Fett, just get out of the way. But... Disney has been always trying to get, trying to reintroduce Boba Fett in the Disney era of Star Wars. I mean, originally they were going to do a film uh, directed and written by James Mangold, the same guy who did Logan, but I think that got scrapped. So it just feels more, it feels like a good idea just getting him in this series. But, but yeah, I, I mean, I love Boba Fett. He's one of my favorite characters, and I've always wanted him to see back in the kind of the Disney era, see what happens after post Return of the Jedi, and yeah. It was a great idea. I completely, just forget what I said. I mean, I absolutely love this episode. And the reason why, because they were trying to bring back Boba Fett. But the other thing that caught me off guard, we're going back to Tatooine. And I feel like at this point, a lot of fans are kind of annoyed about it because, including me, because we've seen, we've went back to Tatooine in the first episode of the series. And we've, we've explored Tatooine so many times in the movies. But I know a lot of people don't like, well, I wouldn't say don't like, I'm not too fond of the episode in series one, The Gunslinger, because it feels more like nostalgia porn. Oh, we're going back to Moss Eisley. Oh, we're going back to the same canteen when Luke was. So that kind of annoyed me. But I was, I, I mean, I like The Gunslinger episode. It's an episode I think I appreciated it with, with every viewing because I like it more than some other people. But I can understand why they don't because it is kind of, it doesn't really play a, a key part in the whole arc of series one. But yeah, I like the gong slip. But going back to Tatooine, I absolutely loved it because we actually get to explore kind of a different part of Tatooine this time. We're not going, we don't really spend much time in Mos Eisley. We get to explore different parts and that's what I loved about it. But yeah, going back to Tatooine, I think Tatooine is like one of my favorite planets of Star Wars. So either way, I was still happy. What I loved about this episode, it actually touches on the canon of Star Wars. There's a minor character from the Aftermath trilogy, Cobb Fanf, and he plays a big role in this episode, but it was so good to see a minor character into live action. It was kind of so rewarding, but seeing Cobb Fanf in this Mandalorian armor, because he's not actually Mandalorian, he brought this armor from the Jawas, but you can see straight away from the... Um, Mandalorian's face, well, his facial expression, you could just tell he's disgusted by him because he's wearing this armor and he doesn't deserve to. But when you get to the very end of the episode, he kind of deserves to wear this armor because he's using it for a good cause. He's not using it for his own needs. He's using it to protect his town. And you kind of feel like he deserves that armor, especially the Mandalorian, because he feels like he ne he needs that armor to protect his town. But the but Cobb fan played by Timothy Orfit. He is just so good in this episode. I think he needs to come back. I mean, especially in the finale. But yeah, this was a, it was just so rewarding. But Timothy Oliver and Cobb Fav, oh my God, he needs to come back, please. My favorite thing about the Marshall, and a lot of people aren't talking about it, but I think it plays a really big role in the whole Star Wars universe that in Return of the Jedi, when the Empire was defeated, when the second Death Star was destroyed, 
Not everything was perfect. I mean, there's a lot of places that were abandoned because the empire were losing, so they had to abandon them. So a lot of places like factories were overtaken by like a third party that was just more ruthless. And you can see that during the mining, uh, mining corporation on Tatooine, when like these miners, a third party just came more ruthless and take over the town. And yeah, and not, the films don't really explore it a lot. There's only some novels that explore it like uh, Bloodline. But yeah, I just loved it. I mean, it just shows you that not everything was perfect when the Empire was defeated. But seeing Tusken Raiders, I mean, it was great to see them, but it just shows you they can be fleshed out. They don't have to be scavengers and animals like they did with in Attack of the Clones when they hunted, um, when they captured uh, Anakin's mum. But they can be civilized. I mean, I mean, I loved it how they put their differences aside with the Mos Palgo villagers to find, to hunt down and destroy this crate dragon, and I just loved it. But there's this one scene, and it's just such a beautiful scene. I mean, it's just a shot, but it's towards, it's near the beginning when he's going to, when the Mandalorian was going to Mos Palgo, and he's just at a campfire discussing with the um, Tusken Raiders, and I thought that was just great. There's a lot of things to like about this episode. I mean, one of my favourite things, again, is the cinematography. It's just so beautifully shot. From a wide angle or up close, it just feels very real. It doesn't feel like a background screen, CGI. It's just amazing. I mean, the, just the way towards the end, especially when they're trying to capture this crate dragon, it's just, it's beautiful. I mean, it's the best cinematography I've seen in The Mandalorian so far. But also, there's so many callbacks and references. I mean, of course, when you see Cobb Fan's speeder bike, it's actually made out of parts of uh, pod racing, and we do see get to see pod racing in this. And but you can see Cobb Fan's, and it's very. It feels like it's from Anakin Skywalker's pod racer back in the Phantom Menace. But there's also one scene when like the Mandalorian trusts Cobb Fan towards the end, look after the child for me because he's trying to sacrifice himself to destroy the crate dragon. But he hits this jetpack, and it just and he just flies off like they did in. Um, Return of the Jedi when Han Solo hits, and so then he hits uh, Boba Fett's jetpack and he flies on into the pit. But does that mean his jetpack is really sensitive? Or is it just just in every jetpack? But yeah, that's what I really liked about this episode. Also, we get to see R4 in it, or R5, back in, and it's so happy to see him finally, like he's working properly and he's home and he's finally got home. I like that. But yeah, I just, I love this episode. I mean, of course there are problems to this episode, of course. I mean, it does feel like it has similar beats to episode two when they're trying to find the creature in the cave. And of course you've got like the village episode when they're trying to defend a village. But you also got like uh, beats from, oh, what was it? Oh yeah, of course, like the gunslinger episode when they go back to Tatooine. So it does have that kind of nostalgia porn, but it is nostalgia porn in a great way in this episode. And of course, Baby Yoda doesn't really play a crucial role in this. He's kind of like in the background. And I'm happy with that because this end of the day, this episode is called The Mandalorian. It's an old time Western. It's not called Baby Yoda, or as I like to call it, The Child. I'm one of those fans who takes it seriously. But yeah, I absolutely just, I love this episode. I think it's definitely one of my favorites. I think it could be my favorite because I think it's due to the fact that it's like 50 minutes long and it's, you've got so much to do in this episode. And it's like, it's a filler episode, but it does play a crucial part in the main series. This is my theory for this series. I feel like the first two or three episodes is going to focus on the Boba Fett arc, and we get to, and we get to go to see. Um, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember the actor's name who plays him. I should have known that. But yeah, but that towards the end when you see him, I'm like, oh my god. So I feel like the first two or three episodes we're going to deal with the Boba Fett stuff. And then we get to later on in the series, we're going to deal into the main arc, into like Moff Gideon and finding Jedi like Ahsoka Tano that was, we'll see in this. But yeah, I absolutely adore this episode. It's my favourite premiere compared to the last series. I think Jon Favreau directed the shit out of this. Yeah, I mean, if I had to give this episode a t out of 10, I mean, it, I give it like a 9.5. It was that good and I can't wait for next week I'm gonna get up really early to watch the next episode and I think it's written directed by John Favreau again or maybe Dave Filoni or some other director but yeah so far this is it's off to a great start and I can't wait to see what happens next